Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What Aff, being filmed late at night. <laughs> I love that. We're both exhausted, aren't we? Because you're it's flying solo with the two girls, and I'm not. But Arthur has decided to have an absolute meltdown. So Mummy's upstairs at the moment with a child that's, I think he's 11 days old now, and Arthur bouncing off the walls. So it's been carnage here in different ways. So Come that's why me. we both look like... What are you we saying? Were, no, I'm just saying that we look like we've we've um, hard paper round. It looks like we both did a hard paper round. Paper round in Baghdad, yeah. <laughs> um, it's 20 past eight, and we're supposed to start this at eight, but I've been downstairs trying to settle both girls... I fly solo all the time, so that's not abnormal. Ophi is normally like she takes herself to bed at like quarter past seven, whereas today I could just see the way she was looking at me was, you're doing a podcast at eight, aren't you? <laughs> that's what Arthur was doing. He's like, Lol. you've got to stay up till two in the morning, haven't you? Uh, to film uh, something with a guy about uh, child Sorry, trafficking. I was like, I don't know why, how you know what child trafficking is, but um, yes, I have. So off, yeah. you, off thou kick. Now, off thou kick, yeah. So, I bought, both girls are asleep now, though. Like, just I literally ran downstairs, didn't I, just to make sure, yeah, yeah she's snoring, right? Bosh, let's start going, mate. Parent life, innit? If you went back to the first one, oh, you had a Laura when we started this, but when we first met, you didn't have, I think you just about, I think you, I think, Jim was I, pregnant. I, I, ju I just had Laura. Laura, I think, when we first met because I was, no, 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 I was expecting, yeah, because well, we I, met in London, um, and I think you were, yeah, you were, you were expecting, but yeah, I hadn't yeah. quite had Laura yet. Because I was, I was in that place where it's like you just race back home after everything as opposed to staying over or staying for a few days. That's it's like, it, no, yeah. I need to get back, yeah, which I'm still in that phase now. Yeah, same here. Well, I'm going to be going away less. Less so. Let's get into this. Let's, there's been yeah, the strange... Yeah, so it's just two mates chatting. At the moment, um, it is, but it always was. It always was. It's just the rest is just peripheral nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So now we're two mates chatting, but plug in CBD. Head over to supremecbd.uk. Use the code WTAF. You get 40% off everything. Um, I started telling you a story, Rich, didn't I? As we, we were chatting, like setting up, making sure yeah. one, two, one, two, and all that sort of professionalism. Um, and then I went, oh, I won't tell you because then I won't be able to tell you genuinely during the podcast, obviously. So that was like last week. Sorry, when you said you you said like, well, um, congratulations on your second child, and then you couldn't genuinely say it a second time because you'd run out of. I ran out of genuine. Yeah. Ness. I've only got one in me. <laughs> one good shot in me. Um, oh. So I, yeah. So basically, when I put Law to bed, right, I used to obviously read her a story, like as in books, um, but now she wants imagination ones. Because what can I say? So um, so now it's a number one or a number two, which which listeners might sort of confuse with perhaps toiletry shenanigans. But she says a number one, what that means is imagination. So we are talking about, you know, Grand Bula the fairy and all sorts going on in, in some other realm. But if she says a number two, that means a story that's true, either from history, significant, cool, weird, quirky, or something that happened to me as a kid, which is, Weird, quirky, cool. So tonight I told her that because last week I told her a story and then I, and she loved it. And then I realised when I went and sat down that I just told her the whole theme of Goodnight Sweetheart. Do you remember the <laughs> Nicholas Lindhurst thing about going back in time to the Blitz because he went down the wrong alleyway? And I just ripped it off and I thought I was well proud of myself, but total rip off. <laughs> anyway, so tonight I told her a true story, a number two story, and it was about Pickles the dog. You remember who? when they stole the World Cup after 1966 and someone found pickles in a hedge with the, with the Jules Rimet trophy and no one knows who nicked it or why they nicked it or who gave it the dog and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so I told her the story and I was like, obviously being animated as you do, I was like, literally no one knows. To this day, Elora, no one knows. And she went, I know. And I went, go on, <laughs> right? And she went, so there's someone called Alana don't know where she got that name from apart from the fact maybe it's similar to her own uh, someone called Alana I went Alana I'm thinking I went to school with a girl called Alana I went yeah go on and she went she stole the trophy and then when she thought she was going to get caught she quickly stuck it next to a dog and went look over there it's the trophy next to the dog and blame the dog and I went it's good a theory as anyone else that's a cracking theory <laughs> to be this fair weird, from yeah. a five year old I went pretty good theory and Alana's quite specific. 
That's I don't a, know how that actually... alarms there were in London in the 60s. <laughs> Probably not that, many. That could have happened. That could have happened. The poor old dogs. Yeah. Nothing to do with it. Pickles, they're going... <laughs> Shaggy. So who was Pickles? Like, was it a specific dog? that Did they ever find out what Pickles was... I think it was just had a collar that said pickles on it, didn't it? Right. I don't. I don't. I actually don't know it's that much such about a it. Weird given story. I've just told the story. <laughs> and it's such a weird story. It's like when it's they, so... when when the guys stole the stone of destiny. <laughs> when they, do you remember that? When they were pissed up Scottish students that oh, stole yeah, the stone yeah, yeah, of yeah. destiny. <laughs> you know, took a traffic cone home a couple of times. I know you have as well. Never woken up with the stone of destiny yet. No, not trying hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great story well I like the kids got, like last week um, Arthur he comes up with some stuff but he genuinely was crying I was crying I sent it to you and I watched it and the people have been watching quite a lot um, I just turned around and I just heard something and I went what was it and he went ball bags I was like brilliant it's the way he said it as well I went what was that Arthur and I was genuinely like finding it hilarious at the same time and then you hear Sam in the background going oh no no <laughs> no and then there's blood gates. Ball bags. What, what was the fact he was dressed as Captain America while saying ball bags? That just made it's a it weird better. house we live in, Gaz. It's a really weird house. Norfolk, though, isn't it? It is. It's a, is just... it weird for Norfolk for Captain America to be saying ball bags at dinner table? Probably no, not. Absolutely not. Really, though, it's, it's definitely not um, for a three-year-old. Um, no. But yeah, I'm quite. I mean, there's worse things. It's quite. It's very London, London cabby. I was quite happy with that. Um, I like but it. Yeah, yeah. The fact that I didn't mind that. I'm just. I, I know he's going to repeat it at school. So I'm looking forward to that. Every time I hear that, that term, I think of Derby County 2, Coventry City 1, Callum Ball scoring both goals and the headline being Ball Bags 2. It's still... Because you know that's not slipped past the editor. The editor's gone, go that's, with it. That's genius, that is. That's excellent. Yes, that is excellent. It's, yeah. Because it's, it's just risky enough for us to still be talking about it 10 years later, but not risky enough... <laughs> To get anyone in trouble. Oh, it's great. And that's the sort of job we would have done. That's Chandler's job, weren't it? He did basically made a whole job out of puns. That's, that's what he that's ended exactly up doing. That's exactly what he did. Yeah. R.I.P. Oh, bless him. Yeah, the person's dead. The character was never alive. Um, bless him. Uh, where, where are we going with this, Gaz? It's late. Um, what's your first what? <laughs> <laughs> that's the show, isn't it? Yeah. Um, let's go with the funniest one. It's got to be... and You might have this one. Ben Shapiro. No. You but haven't it got it. I haven't got it now. Oh, Ben Shapiro. So, guys, I've got, you... I've got a few other names out of the gang. I mean, but I ain't got Ben. The Coolio in the gang. Um, someone, um, Stu Peters put it out as Julio, which really made me laugh. The Kazari in Paradise. But it's, it's so funny, guys. And I'm sure you've seen it. We're not going to put clips in here as well. And I wouldn't want to get, get, get a, like, ripping off his, his cool verses. Um, but it is brilliant. Whatever put him up to it. Is is amazing. It's almost like he thinks he's being funny, but it's, it's just so cringe that he can't deliver that and be funny with it. It's like I don't know. He doesn't get it. I'm surprised how bad he is, though, given how fast he talks. I would have thought because he's one of those that just machine gun talks, so he makes him sound more intelligent than he is, mm. and puts people on the back foot because they're trying to process what he's saying because he's doing it at like four thousand miles an hour, which isn't accidental, of mm. course. Um, you'd think with the ability to to machine gun talk the way he does, he'd be a fucking dab hand at rapping. He really no. isn't. It's terrible. So I've got the lyrics here, guys. Go on. I've done my research. So um, it starts off with it's just from shit posts, by the way. <laughs> Great website. Wish I bought that. So this is his his rap. Look at. Let's look at the stats. I've got the facts. My money like Lizzo. My pockets are fat. I don't know who Lizzo is. Homie, I'm epic. Don't be a wap. Dog is a y jar mulk. Homie, no cap. I don't know what that means. What's a jar mulk? I've no idea. Someone from Yarmouth. These are just words. Yeah. Look at the grass. Look at my charts. You're blowing my money on strippers and cars. You're going to prison, I'm on television. Dogs, no one knows who you are. Keep hating on me on the internet. My comic, my comment section's all woke Karens. This, none of this rhymes now, he's lost them. He can't be bothered to rhyme it. And I'm making racks off compound interest. You'll live with your parents. Nikki, take some notes. Nikki Haley, I would assume. Nikki, take some notes. Nikki, take some 
Uh, sorry, Nikki takes some notes. I just did this for fun. All my people download this. Let's get billboard number one. Okay, I thought he loved Nikki Haley. He described Nikki Haley as his spirit animal once. Well, maybe he's saying, look, like, I'm dropping this, and I'd like to collab. It's the future of America, isn't it? What do you mean his spirit animal? When she was um, American ambassador to the UN, and there was a a, um, a war crimes um, thing put in against Israel, and the US veto it every time, because why would you possibly, you know... Let them cross yourself up. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. You know what I mean. What you're not, you're not going to stitch up your own boss, are you? Um. So she vetoed it, obviously, and um, she's there like that with her hand up, dead stern face, no lips, weird looking woman, and um, yeah, he tweeted that that was his spirit animal. Oh wait, so what animal? But that yeah, that's an animal that doesn't want to investigate war crimes. (laughs) What kind of animal that is? That sort of animal. Uh, supported by an, a little animal that, that loves them. But th- this was a, a cracking... I, I did not know what to do with it. I thought, I'd never thought I'd see the day. I never even thought about it, to be honest. It never crossed my mind that Ben Shapiro would try and do a do a rap. But there you go. Look at the stats. I've got the facts. My money like Lizzo. My pockets are fat. Homie, I'm epic. Don't be a wap. Dog is a yarmulk. If you know what that is, guys, please email in. Homie, no cap. Look at the grass. Look at my charts. You're blowing money on strippers and cars. I'd have gone with farts there. You're going to prison. I'm on television. Dogs, no one knows who you are. Keep hating on me on the internet. My comments section is all woke. Karen's. And I make racks off compound interest. You'll live with your parents. Nikki, take some notes. I just did this for fun. All my people download this. Let's get this to billboard number one. So, guys... I think I laid that down pretty well myself there, to be honest. I enjoyed it. Yep. I enjoyed it. Um, a bit of a jump then. <laughs> Smart meters. <laughs> so, that is I think if it, if it wasn't so late at night, we could have tied that together. Smart meters. So um, I told you, didn't I, about the, the bullshit I had getting our smart meter taken out here. Yeah. Because we bought the house and didn't realise I should have done my due diligence on that, to be fair. Didn't, didn't, and it had a smart meter, so it's obviously like, it's got to go. And sh- sh- long story short, basically, they told me they'd, they'd sorted it, and they hadn't. And then I phoned another guy who then went, no, they didn't do anything that they were supposed to do. And I went, right, but they told me they did. So they lied to me then, and he was on the spot, and he was very much kind of, well, no, I don't know. Yeah, they did. They lied to me, mate. They told you something wasn't true in answer to a question that you had a specific need for a reply yeah. to. That's a yeah. lie. And so they took it, they, they 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 sorted it, but it was, yeah. Anyway, obviously they want everyone to have one. And the, the, the sales pitch for that is that, you know, you can see how much you're spending. But I'm pretty sure you don't want to see, to be honest. Um, and it, it can it's better for the environment. It means they can save energy or whatever. It's all bollocks, obviously. The, the real reason is more and more control. So this, this we were both tagged in this, mate. And um, let me get this up. This was by a guy called Paul Smith on X. Yeah, he's been sending some good stuff. Sorry, Paul, if I haven't read it. I've been very busy um, yeah. running around after children. We, but yeah, I'm sorry. We do get people tag us, don't we, with, with stuff. Yeah. And a lot of the what ifs are basically like, this was the Tim Fall hat thing a year ago, and now it's just normal. So um, this is in Australia. Um, Energex, which I guess is, is a, a large um, energy company in Australia. Energex remotely cuts power to... 170,000 air conditioners six times in a month um, during a heat wave. So obviously people have whacked up their air conditioners because it's freaking hot. It's Australia. It, it is. The, they only like barbecues because they don't have a choice. Well, yes, the barbecue is the cooling down period. Yeah. So so all of a sudden, don't get a smart meter because one because oh shit one because of <laughs> <laughs> smack the mic. Smack the bike, right. Um, but yeah, one being obviously the the, the fact that it's um, emitting a shitload of EMFs and all that sort of bollocks, that's that's bad news Bible. But also the other thing that we were saying was the fact that if they can shut off your, if they've got control of your smart meter, they've got control of the power in your home, they can literally, with a flick of a switch, stop you making your dinner, stop you heating the house, stop you doing whatever. Um, and so when it comes to net zero bollocks, oh, sorry, boys, you've had a hot tub on, haven't you, this week? Well, no heating for you for two weeks then. And, um, yeah, you've and had your quota. You've had your quota. And people go, oh, for goodness sake, it's nothing to 
do with that? Is there anything that's not a conspiracy? Energex remotely cuts power to 170,000 air conditioners six times in a month, six times in a month during a heat wave. Imagine that. You're there. You've got your air conditioner on. How much you spend on that? A few quid. Got the air conditioner on. Cranked it up because, like, what, what was it? I think it's Steve Hughes who said that basically Australia is about a mile and a half from the surface of the sun. <laughs> and, and it's like, it's baking art. So you've got the air conditioner on and suddenly it just turns off. What's happened? Is it broken? No, it's just the energy company turned it off. I'm sweating my ass off. In fact, I'm dying. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. You're just like, that's another conspiracy theory. We'll tick that one off. Yeah, well, it is, again, they're not theories anymore, and they are conspiracies. Your dad's been talking about this stuff for decades, and many, many others have, but, like, it's clearly this stuff is coming about. about. So, I mean, I don't know what to... to I mean, everybody who listens to this will understand and know, know that. Anything with the word smart in it is, is obviously an inversion of actually what it is. You'll be part of the Internet of Bodies, and you will be part of... Of the, um, you will be a thing in the internet of things, and then we know that. And then that would bring us on to where we are with a certain man that sounds like a deodorant, um, but he's not. He smells of shit. I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, Mr. Musk. Ah, go on. I had him as well. Go. Did you not get that from my link? Like that tool was you lost the illusion. What? Well, it's as bad as this is, right? Because I've got two back to back. I was thinking, does Malay or Sunak sound like a deodorant? <laughs> no, they really don't. Malay sounds like, well, it sounds like a, a scrap, doesn't it? A melee. But it also sounds like maybe you could get away with Johnny Depp. It's no, it's no worse than Sauvage, is it, mm. Malay? No, Malay sounds a little bit like a chocolate. I can, I can, yeah. It's like an expensive... Chocolate. Yeah, a white, a white chocolate Malay. Yeah, it's European. Yeah, give, yeah. Me the, give you the runs. Um, it's made, made with Austrian cow's milk. So, right. so from that, that little link that I did there, you didn't get that I was talking about Musk, although you had Musk on your... I did when you said Musk. As soon as, as, soon as you said Musk, I went, That's... I reckon he's talking about Elon Musk. <laughs> That's exactly how, how it works, this guess a game thing. Right, so Elon Musk, we all know, has been putting things in people's heads for a while. Um... The first Neuralink connection chip in someone's head has gone in. We have literally gone over the over the line now. And when this, I, I read this, and we knew it was coming. Well, it's probably been done way before this. This one, obviously, um, it's been done in the deep underground bases probably for the last sixty years. Um, look at the Osmonds. But I think um, look, this is the first official one. And I went out in the garden at night after I read it. I think I posted on Edad's website. Looked up at the stars, and I thought we've we, we've gone over the limit now and i couldn't find the moon so i just thought okay the moon's fucked off it's gone he's had moon's enough. enough moon's had enough and i just thought oh, we've, we've, we've crossed the line here now haven't we yeah yeah and it's and it's sold as as the good thing i, I said this in the show this week actually the fact that they will always sell something because they have to as a positive so obviously with the Neuralink, it's like People say, yeah, but this can help paralyzed people walk again. This can help blind people see again. This can help dumb people speak again, whatever. And of course, yeah, that's amazing. I don't have a problem with that. That That's obviously a good thing. Um, but the problem is it doesn't stop there because these things never stop there. And they're not designed for that. That's just the thing. And I always use this, the same example is, is when you, if you, you said that, say, Silicon Valley and say the state as an extension of Silicon Valley, whatever, said what we're going to do is we're going to put something in your car, we're going to put something in your phone so we know where you are at all times, we know where you're going, we know where you've been, we know where you frequent most places than others. You tell them to jog on. You go, that's in intrusive as hell. So they called it a sat-nav. Yeah. <laughs> and now you yeah. think it's amazing and dead convenient. I don't drive anywhere without sat-nav on. Or Just a make sure. Phone. We've got a tracker right next to us all the time. Exactly. I mean, I, I know people that do it where they just put the sat-nav straight on, on the phone, and you go, you know where you're going, don't you? You do is drive all the time. Yeah, but it's just to check for traffic. So it's like, so all the time you've got that on yeah. because the sales pitch was it's convenient, isn't it? It's the same as cashless. Do you go cashless? Yeah, it's easy, isn't it? Boop. Yeah, you know, you know where this goes when there's no cash there, right? Yeah, and, and when you've got your heat and vent up too long. And, and, and Neuralink's the same. It, it comes in as something great that can help people but that's not what it's there for absolutely it's not how it ends. 
And and the, the I mean we know the nefariousness and all the symbology behind that. I won't go into that stuff. This is not the program for that. But this is what the the uh, kind of the sales pitch was. The first product called telepathy. Oh come on! Would allow people to control their phones or computers just by thinking. Come on, guys! It's like why would you want that? Because the amount of times like you'd be sitting there with your nan and like the computer will go bing bing bing, and literally you just have tits everywhere, wouldn't you? You would literally have like. Fannies and tits everywhere. And also, thinking... how, how lazy do you need to be? <laughs> exactly. Just by thinking. But the thing is, you can't control your thoughts. Your thoughts come. It's like, like clouds. It's not. Don't think of a pink elephant. You will think of a... Everyone has just does. Well, yeah. Well, what if you get an intrusive thought? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it can just you can control your phones or computers by thinking. Well, does that mean, like, if I watch something on telly and you put... Something in a, like you put something on TV that I don't particularly like, like dark web in my head, and I'm gonna go, oh fucking hell, I better not go go on that dark web, and then suddenly your computer goes bing bing. <laughs> it's just like, do you know what I mean? This is insane. So planting the chip in the part of the brain that controls motor function would enable people to overcome neurological disorders. That's fantastic, absolutely, yeah. nothing wrong with that. Of course it is, but why would you want to control your phones and your computers just by thinking? Then I get what they're saying, but. And they use Stephen Hawkins, who was on Epstein Island, as the poster boy. Um, it's like, I get it. So basically, you're saying you could <laughs> reanimate, isn't the word I'm looking for, but I'm going with it. Reanimate Stephen Hawkins is your... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, he's brown bread, isn't he? So... Well, exactly. So you're saying that... But obviously, then you look at to the smart meters, the uh, Internet of Things and Internet of Bodies, and then you, you are becoming a thing and this is what it said you can control your devices was what he said the wording that musk said i believe was you can control your devices that's flip that round in the satanic inversion that they always were you are the device being controlled that's the point that we've been yeah. trying to point out for years your dad yeah. everyone it's so bloody obvious and people this is why why is someone like a joe rogan who's just got a new deal, um, or and someone who knows full well this, like like an Alex Jones. Why are they pushing this? They know full well this way more. They've known this for decades. Where's Joe Rogan got a new deal? Didn't he only just get 80-odd million? Is that not enough? I think that's the deal I'm probably looking at, but he has got a new deal. It's one of the ones I was going to come to later. So Joe Rogan is obviously, he definitely is, um, yeah, 2nd of February. So this is this is from today, yeah. Um, Patrick Ben David, obviously Israeli first. Yeah, 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 Joe Rogan reaches new Spotify deal worth up to two hundred and fifty million. But he's definitely alternative media. I mean, me and you have made at least a few quid off of the CBD. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, it, 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 how can you say these people are alternative? Well, well, that's the thing. You've got Joe then getting two hundred and eighty over those two deals, million off of Spotify, while Dad's banned from it. Exactly. Hmm. And 26 other countries, plus a few more. Yeah. It, it is insane. So you've got Joe Rogan there. You've got this whole gaggle of alternative, not alternative, means leading people off the cliff. You've got Joe Rogan sitting there with Russell Bowen Brown. We've covered this all before, but come on out. More obvious. Can you, They're circling the wagons now, these guys. And yeah, they um, are, yeah. They really yeah. are, and, yeah. And they're just interviewing themselves constantly. It's almost like there's a clique where they're just interviewing cross-pollinate all the time. Yeah. Which yeah, is fine. They've you got do, people yeah. in, in their little... They've got an audience in there. But people... It does make it more and more obvious. So 250 million um, he's got from Spotify for, for being a bald chap that talks and doesn't particularly know too much. Or at least he doesn't say anything that's any... any of any depth. Oh, well, good luck to him, I suppose. Um, you, Les. That's not an insult. Um, that's gone from strength to strength. Obviously, the the ultra low emission zone in London. Um, not only is it bankrupting people and people that have to drive in and out for work, costing them like a grand a month and shit. Jesus. Um, but this week it was caught on. Um, I think I'm pretty sure it was caught on. It was caught on CCTV and a bunch of ring doorbells because I think everyone in London has them. So basically on. It was on New Year's Eve, but the story's only broke this week. Um, a 10-month-old baby starts having a fucking seizure. So the mother's obviously like, bang, straight on the phone to the ambulance. The ambulance is 
I was going to say scrambled, but they don't do that, do they? That's fighter jets and eggs, isn't it? So they send an ambulance, like blues and twos on, obviously. And the, the CCTV and ring doorbell footage shows how it comes steaming down the road to try and save this 10-month-old baby. And um, on a ULES, mate, so they've got things blocking the road. Jesus. So you can't get down that road anymore because of weather. So um, the footage shows how the ambulance has to stop, can't go through the barriers, and the fucking paramedics have to grab a bunch of shit out the back and they're legging it down the road to the house to try and save the life of a 10-month-old baby. And is the baby survivor, I'm hoping? Yeah, thankfully. Uh, But the mum's obviously going fucking bonkers, as you would. Yeah. Um, And then the ambulance itself turns up, having gone round the moon to get to the sun, and turns up, you know, 10 minutes later or whatever, once it's got round the fucking barrier that's there to save the world from boiling. And you just look at it and you just think, right, so what you've got is you've got someone like... Sadiq Khan, who, who, who's, you know, is as crooked as a question mark, but they sell this whole kind of pipe dream of, right, this is how many lives ULES has saved. There's no evidence of it. They, they never show any evidence because there is no evidence. It's you just, can't, how can you evidence just that? Theory, theory. So we're theorising that actually what we've done is we, we're, we're about to bankrupt London for the fourth time in my mayorship, um, which is quite fucking some work, man. But but I think Transport for London something like, I don't know how many hundred million in debt, um, which is going to pull it over the edge again. Um, so what we need is we need a quick money spinner. So we'll whack this ULES shit everywhere to try and bankrupt everyone. But what's happening is it's fucked over because loads of people cut loads down for a start. Um, and people are leaving London in droves, which I don't blame them. I spent two years there and I, I wouldn't ever go back um, to live. Um so you can make up figures that are about your head about how many lives you've saved when actually real, real life, real, true. I can I've seen it on a ring doorbell evidence of your shit actually risking lives. Um, and this is just the one that we know about because the mum's a bit of a warrior not having it. Plus, it was caught on all this CCD footage. Plus, it's a 10 month old, which obviously evokes more of an emotion in, in the reader. So the Daily Mail want to exploit that for clicks, obviously. Yeah. Um, but this shit will be happening all the time. Yeah, of course it will. Of course it it's, will. And it's just, right. it, it, it literally is an inconvenient truth. And it is, um, again, it's another part part of it. You, you're it, you're getting it, people to not being able to afford to to, to, ha- to go to work as well. It's like It doesn't make any sense either. Like the ULES cameras charging people, fine. If you're going to sell that as your... your you're making money and you're incentivizing people going and getting newer cars with less emissions, whatever... What does putting a barrier in the middle of a street so that it becomes two cul-de-sacs do to save the fucking planet? It doesn't make any sense. And those things are popping up. That They're what's popped up for all over Oxford, creating this 15-minute city. Melbourne, Milan, these places have already gone down that road, or rather not. They've tried to go down that road, and they've realised they can't get it, and they've got to turn around. Um, <laughs> but actually, not far from me, three or four miles from me, a place called Sutton, um... I, I went down a road, and I've not lived here long, remember, Rich? I've only lived in this area like 18 months, maybe. Um, I've driven down a road a bunch of times. I went to drive down, I think I told you on a different what up, actually. Um, I went to drive down it, this will be about two, three months ago now, and they've done it there. This is Sutton in Ashfield, in Nottinghamshire. I literally just went to, they've got a whole fucking barrier down. So they've literally made two cul-de-sacs out of, a, out of a street that I used to drive down. So then I was like, oh, fuck. I was using my sat nav. No, I I was like, fuck, what do I... so I was literally just drove around again, around the sun to get to the moon, to get out of it. And it's like, well, actually, by doing that, I've been in the car longer, therefore I've chucked more diesel out everywhere. It doesn't make any sense. Of course it doesn't. Of course it does. It's all about control. Control. It's exactly people. what it's about. Yeah. It's about control and inconvenience. Stressing people out, poking them with a stick all the time, agitating. No one can relax. You can't relax. You can't relax. You've got to be pissed off all the time. There's always something. There's always something. There's always something. Hmm. Because at that point, everyone goes, I'm done. And everyone checks out. And as soon as you check out, piece of cake, mate. Yeah. Yeah, it's checkmate out. It is. Again, we can keep warning people of these things, but we're at the point where we're putting chips in people's heads and they think that's a good idea. Um, again, I don't know how far we can go down this, this loony bin lane and um, just carry on before it is too late. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I didn't... <laughs> it's fabulous. 
some reason, the saviour, that is Donald Trump... Here we go. ...has a replica of the Ark of the Covenant at his home in mar lago <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> I don't. I don't, Gaz. I don't. You don't, really? No, I don't. I mean, it looks like a massive thing. Look, you base it... It's an Ottoman. That's exactly what it is. It's just a big Ottoman that you keep, well, like... <laughs> That is the Ottoman Empire. I think we just solved a, a bit of conspiracy here. The Ottoman Empire was a big Ottoman at the bed end of the a king's bed that he just kept his his like worn out shitty slippers in. That's the Ottoman Empire, and then we built it up into something that, oh, for God's sake, Mate, stick that on Rumble. That'll go viral. <laughs> it will. This is guy. I recognise the guy to the left who's standing in front of it, but I don't actually know his name. He looks like a a politician. You'd recognise him if you saw the photo. Doesn't Laura Luma pose with it as well? Is she the guy? Dark hair, red dress. Pretty I thought she had a blue dress on, but she's she's the. Oh, I'm sure she can change her dress. Yeah, she's the one that's just so rabidly pro-Israel that even she goes a bit too far for them sometimes. Right, maybe maybe that is her on the right. Um, I don't know who these people are, but the le- the guy on the left, um, he I recognise him. But anyway, they're at Mar Lago and they're posing with the fake Ark Ark of the Covenant. Why? And then obviously people are going, no, it's the real one. He's going to save the world with the Ark of the Covenant. He's going to waft it open, obviously, Project Blue Beam and all that stuff. Waft it open, and then I don't know what what's the Ark of the Covenant supposed to do. I can't remember now. Um, what is it? Uh, to turn off every smart meter. <laughs> That's what it is. It saves a, the world. Ark of the Covenant. What is it supposed to do? So and I should know this, but I don't. So let's Google it. Um, Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, also known as the Ark of the Testimony... For his, to its mates, or the Ark of God, to its real close mates, is believed to have been the most sacred religious relic of the Israelites. <laughs> he's got, a, he's definitely you. He's definitely a U.S. president, though. But he's got the most sacred um, religious relic of the Israelites, um, a relic of uh, a replica of that, apparently, or the real one, in his living room. Um, it is described as a wooden chest coated in pure gold and topped off with. By an elaborate golden lid known as the mercy seat, according to the Book of Exodus in the Hebrew Bible, um, the Ark of the Cover, um, the Ark contained the tablets of the law by which God delivered the Ten Commandments. Okay, to Moses at Mount Sinai, which means Mount Sin, which obviously means moon, so the moon mountain. According to the Espital of the Hebrews of the New Testament, it also contains Aaron's rod, which is probably a massive deal, though, and a pot of manna, which is probably just a, some coke. <laughs> It basically contains a massive dildo and some coke um, and some old slippers. That's what he's got at the end of it. But he's, this is the form, the, possibly the future again. President of the US has the most sacred Israelite. Um, most certainly. The, uh, the, the, the next president. And if he's not, because they managed to get him in jail, then it's it's the catalyst for a civil war that they want, in it? Well, this is a good point. I interviewed um, Stuart Swerdlow. I know you guys you will know... Um, who the guy is um, and the listeners and he was talking about um, the fact that they're hinting that Trump isn't very well at the moment and that maybe he'll have to kind of pull out from being in the race and they might go to martial law so that's what he was talking about so I don't know if you've heard anything about him being unwell I have heard little things that they keep dropping like he's not mentally very well like not none of them are None of them are. No, well, that's good. That's, that's the sort of a, a pre. You have to be George W. Bonkers. That's a prerequisite, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but you got the uh, fake Ark of the Covenant in your living room, so that's going to be pushed at some way, some way. But yeah, I found that amazing. It's like it's. I didn't know that was the Israelites thing. I knew. Um, I knew it was something to do Solomon's Temple, but there you go. So he's got a fake one of them in there, but definitely U.S. America first. With dildos in it, you said right. Yeah. So Victorian Newland. Um, <laughs> Absolute fucking warmonger extraordinaire. She's delivering. I saw this last night. Um, Victoria Newland landed in Kiev and started issuing threats towards Russia. She can't back up. Now, when you watch the video, it's just on Twitter. Yeah. She's, I've got it on my Twitter if people want to find it. She's literally, it's like she's, it's quite late at night. She's in a street. So behind, I can see just like, paving a couple of houses a couple of cars maybe a couple of tram lines there some street lights she set up a makeshift press conference so there's like a desk which i think has just been nicked from what, home it's outside it's in kiev right or, or kiev sorry chicken kiev um and so she's got some microphones on it 
but they look like dildos because they're all different shapes and sizes. And so she's just stood there giving this makeshift press conference where she's basically just saying, we're going to destroy Russia. You're not. Um, and I described it as a pissed soccer mum sets up a weird deal dildo stall because that's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> Victoria Newland is she she the maniac one that stands next to? Um, let me have a look. I know the name, but I can't picture in Victoria Newland. There you go. She is the oh, I've gone straight to no, that's definitely not her. Oh, she's please. wearing an inflatable jacket by the look of it. Right, that's definitely not her because that was a, a young woman in a pool with a with the norks out. Um, Victoria. Newland, I'm going to go straight back to that one again. Why can't I find her? Have I been blocked? Victoria. So it's N U. Oh, it's N U. Yeah. Okay, so if you go Newland, as in the, you'll get some some rather attractive boobs. Um. Oh yeah, it's her. It's not the lady I was thinking of. Yeah, I recognise her. Yeah, she she okay. she's basically stood there in the street for no reason. So I don't understand why you would do a press conference there. So for me, if you're going out to cave. And you're going to do, so say for me, for instance, right, Rich? So I am going to um, New York yep. to deliver a press conference. Um, New York's under attack from the Mexicans. Um, so I would, you would imagine you'd probably go as close to the front line as you can. So there's some action in the background, maybe some war. No, that's not there. Okay. Well, in which case, I'll go to a landmark then. Yeah. If I'm not going to go to a studio and I want to set up my dildo stall outdoors... <laughs> I'll go to a landmark, so I'll go stand in front of the Empire State Building, I'll yep. stand in, 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 um, in Central Park, maybe in front of the Plaza Hotel or whatever. No. At least an obelisk. No, she's she's basically just just like some little back street off Bleecker, some houses, some trees, just to, uh, all right, do you want to buy this one? So, <laughs> what is, is wrong with these people? They're Victoria, mental. has it been used? Um, what do you mean by used? But when I look at her now, because I'm watching the videos playing silently in the background, she's she looks like she's sat on one anyway, in the sense that she's really quite upright. Like I imagine, imagine me here. I'm sat here. I'm um, slouching a bit because yeah. I slouch, and that's not good. You know, right? What I'm going to do then? I'm going to stick a broom up your ass and up your back if you don't stop slouching. Fuck! I've slouched again. Bosh. Dildo. So then, that's how she is. She's like that. Like kind of, she stood up, but but in a really unnatural position. Mm. Mm. Wow. Like like someone's shoved a couple of fucking anal beads, but those vibrational ones up her ass, and as she's delivering the dildo pitch, they're just pressing the remote control. So every now and then, we oh, yeah, are fucking hell. I can't. What's going on? I really want to see this because I'm, I don't know if I'm confused and horny at the same I time. I don't. I want to unsee it. <laughs> I'm Googling if it. I, can, if oh, I don't know. There's loads people. of them. If we can get Neuralink, I can give you it to you. So I can remove it from my memory and you can have it because I don't need it. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah. I think, oh, yeah, I can see it now. I think this must be it. Um, must be. <laughs> this is Victoria Newland calls Chinese bluff on Sri Lanka debt relief. Well, there's relief going on. I don't think this is the same one, but she definitely looks like she's sitting on a dildo in this one too. Have you ever watched um, Big Hero 6? No. I know what you mean, but I haven't seen it. The big inflatable guy... That's what she looks like. If you if you painted her white, she's Big Hero Six. Let's have a look. Big Hero Six, main character. Let's have a look. Yes, that's Victoria Leland. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, exactly I, the same shape and arm movements. <laughs> like that. Yeah. They, they go like they that's, can, that's, that's how she not, is. She's not moving her arms. She's moving her belly. That's moving her arms. That's what you're doing. Um, she's a proper soccer mum, though, isn't she? Yeah. Not I'm good... allowed to, to be rude and obnoxious towards her. Yeah. Because she's a cunt. <laughs> she really is. So she's, she's a, war a warmonger. She's a pig. She yeah. deserves no respect whatsoever. So she wants war with Russia for the US. Wants She wants the US to go to war with Russia. Or just everybody to die. She wants our soul to die. Our soul to die. Okay, that's great. Fucking die, son. And, you... And... Toxic, mas masculine bastard. Victoria Newland. So who is she? Is she a Republican? Is she a... What is she? Victoria Newland's Canadian, isn't she? I don't know. Victoria Newland. Um, I'm, politics isn't my go-to, mate, is it? I'm trying, trying. Oh, no, no, yeah. she's the Secretary of State. For, who am I thinking of then as well? 
Who's the Canadian warmongering fucking um, Biomax? She's the wo- weird woman with Trudeau who looks like she's going to lose her. She looks yes, like she that's who really, I, that's who really I, loves that's him. Who I, that's who I was getting confused with. I thought that's who you were talking about. Initially. No, she's the, she's the one who's the daughter of or granddaughter of Nazis. What's that's her it. name? Yeah, Trudeau. And she looks like she's deeply, deeply like obsessed and in love with Trudeau. Like she follows him around like 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 a little kind of bunny boiler in the background. Yeah, what's her name? Trudeau lady. That's what I'm going to put on the internet. Um, no, I no. put Trudeau woman and I just got his wife. Yeah, I got his wife with a satin hat on. She's quite attractive. Canadian... Um, Min- Min- no. Um, Parliament. Government. Daisy, this, this podcast now has, has, has basically come Google with me. Oh, mate. I can't remember how her name. I get, I, how did I get those two confused as well? We both did, though, so I feel less bad about it. So who are we looking at now? Well, I didn't get him confused because I didn't know who you were talking about. Now I'm totally confused. Who's the one who looks like they've got loads of dildos in front of them? Are we talking about Victoria Newland or this woman? Yeah, we're talking about Victoria Newland. Newland is the dildo seller. Okay, so who's what, what are we connecting in this? So we were both getting her confused with the... Uh, Nazi uh, descendant. Yes, it. Yep. Who there is in? She is. I found What's her. What's her name? Her name is. I don't... Oh God, say why can't you just? I've seen a face. I've seen a face. Christy. Christ. Christia Freeland. Freeland. Newland Freeland. That's why we oh, fucked her. Oh, it's the lands. Yeah, she looks mental, like proper mental. Well, they 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 both look like a, an absolute mess. <laughs> but but there we go. Right, okay, so at least now we know land. Land, yeah. No man's land, basically. So, anyone with land. Uh, yeah. Carl Weathers is dead. Who's that? Um, the guy that played it. Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed. Oh, is he? Yeah, he died a little while ago, didn't he? Rest in peace, Carl Weathers. No, he just died now. Oh, right. Oh, Jesus, that was quick, just now. Literally. Uh, uh, rest in peace, Carl Weathers, a.k.a. Apollo Creed. Wow, I thought he died a little while back. I do that quite a lot. I think people are dead, and it turns out they're not. But then I find out they have died, and I think, well, I just thought you were dead anyway. I don't know what to do with this. I've so already, what, already grieved is, for you. Is, what if is breaking news? But it's not breaking news because this doesn't go out till Sunday. <laughs> um, let's go get this one. So I don't, un- I didn't understand this Taylor Swift thing. No, I didn't either, I was really. Like, what is this about? You're going on about Taylor Swift, shake it off, shake it off. I don't understand. Um, so I ha- I was having a quick look today because I'm going to be interviewing a, a chap later on and we're going to he posted about this Taylor Swift being a PSYOP thing um, and that all these news... You know, they, they, they mash up the news things where they say the same thing and they show you just repeated the same script across different news mainstream news websites. And yeah. they're all saying Taylor Swift is not a PSYOP. Taylor Swift is not a PSYOP. So I didn't really understand what it was. And I still don't quite get my head... I still can't get my head around it. Um, Brooklyn Dad, defiant, um, he said, I think it's an excellent idea that MAGA has decided to attack the phenomenally popular Taylor Swift and her, her devoted fans, many of whom are turning the voting age of 18 this year. What could possibly go wrong? So is it is something to do with using her to get people to vote for Biden? I don't know. I mean, Brooklyn Dad is is like a grade A wank stain. He is. I know. I've I've got rid of him but, a while ago. But what I found interesting with the Taylor Swift stuff, I don't know how it started. I came into it late, where everyone was just going mad at her, and I was thinking, pretty sure there's bigger fish. Yeah. If I'm honest, um, and also she doesn't have to support Donald Trump or anyone else. Like whatever, who gives a fuck? I I don't, I don't base my political. Um, tendencies on what the latest big pop star is thinking. I do. I do that off what I'm thinking. That make more sense. Really. I just think they're all shit. So like. Yeah. Does, yeah. Well, yeah. That, that's it. You know. Well, I did think they were all shit, and then Stan Collymore told me to vote for someone, so I thought, fuck it, I will. You know, it's just <laughs> ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But basically, what I saw was then a lot of like the Trump lot jumping on the fact that Soros owned her music. And they were showing a clip where she was talking about the fact that she wasn't given the opportunity to buy her the f- rights to her own music. Right. So they were bought by X and X and X, which was used with Soros money, right, and right. involved with the Carlyle Group. So they were they were selling that as, look, this is how owned she is. So this is why she's not 
on our side basically because she's owned by Soros. And then I was like, okay, I didn't know that, but it literally took. I fart. I've done a longer fart than the amount of time it took to find out that actually, when that happened, she went back and re-recorded all of her music. Right. Because Soros doesn't own the publishing, in terms of the the writing, she doesn't own the credits to the writing of the song. They own the recording of the song. Right. So she went back and re-recorded all the tunes and re-released them off her own back. So she owned the rights to them. So all of a sudden she went from being a complete Soros puppet div to actually being well, it's pretty fucking bright actually. Well, that's that's just a smart because it's kind I mean... of what Prince did, wasn't it, by fucking them all off with yeah. going as the symbol and shit. Like so, fair play, Taylor. Be honest. Well, she's not silly. I mean, but she she is putting out like May last year. She's putting out satanic imagery in all of her videos like the karma music video so she's she's in with all of that lot as you would have to be to get to that level of the music industry um nowadays anyway it probably wasn't that yeah. way a while I mean, back it's, but... it's, it, i don't i don't know her well enough but i must admit like there's a lot of symbolism around her. there's a lot of stuff that goes on and people will go oh yeah that means they're this and that means they're that but having been at the absolute p list minimal level in comparison when you do a photo shoot or when you make a music video, if you do it with a director and a, and a company, yeah. they are God. So they say, do this. This is the video. This is the theme of the video. We do this. We do X, Y, and Z, blah, blah, blah. Especially with someone at her level where these, these directors or whatever will come with some fucking kudos and will no doubt cost a lot of money. They make a music video. Look how epic that looks. She probably wouldn't look at that and go, well, that looks pretty fucking satanic because that means that and that means that. And what's no, that she wouldn't. No, no. She wouldn't think anything of it. No. So actually, that's not to say that the symbolism isn't there. It's just I don't think it always comes from the artist. No, absolutely I think not. It goes Completely. above that. Yeah. You know, like I, I, for me, it's different. Like if I did a photo shoot with someone, it's actually never happened to me, to be fair. But if I did a photo shoot with someone and they said, right, cover one eye, do X, Y, and Z, blah, 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 I wouldn't because I'd go, nah. Yeah. But, but that's only because I've been around this shit for my whole life, basically. And actually, I I, I almost got done with that, didn't I, with the, the with the Beat Up single. So we had a single called Beat Up. Yeah. So a friend of mine came around, she's a makeup artist, and basically just made my face look like I'd gone 10 rounds with fucking Tyson and uh, with Apollo Creed. And, um, and then so that was the cover. And so that went out, you know, I had a split lip and a black eye and like puffy like nose, I'd obviously taken a whack. And that was seen as symbolism. Oh, it's, it's eye symbolism. So it's, it wasn't. The single's literally called Beat Up. Well, exactly, like, yeah. You have to take no, these so, things with it. With yeah. So I don't know with Taylor. Maybe she's completely in on it and she's well up there and she's fucking knows exactly what's going on. But I, I think sometimes people, people give musicians and other celebrities a bit more credit that they deserve in yeah. terms of what knowledge they have actually they've just gone in they've gone into makeup they've done that they've done a photo shoot they've gone home oh absolutely oh, brian, they brian said the same yeah, brian harvey said the same he said he looked back at the videos he could see the symbology and he had no idea he was just being told to do this do that and just did stuff and didn't really know what he was doing so yeah it happens all the time you look at michael jackson and some, the kid and some, did some, stuff but he's like he wouldn't have known at that age Sometimes the symbolism is so subtle as well. Yeah. Like you could you could have a music video, you could be walking down the street, you turn, you knock on the door, the girl answers the door, you kiss her. That's the end of the music video because finally you've plucked up the courage. It's a love mm. song, blah blah whatever. But the door's number 33. Mm. You you as a as a 19-year-old fucking crooner, whatever like fucking ballad writer, you wouldn't go well, can we go to number th- 32 or number 31 please you just you just I open know the Bob door, lives there the and he's a fat bastard but I don't want to be this is going to turn on me later I'd <laughs> rather snog Bob than get called a Freemason <laughs> um do you know, so let's look at the Neuralink testing I missed this bit out I just wanted to cover this a Neuralink this is how safe it is by the way yeah. Neuralink has been criticized in the past with Reuters reporting in December 2022 that the company engaged in testing with results res, um, which resulted in the deaths of approximately 1,500 animals, including sheep, monkeys and pigs. What could go wrong, Gaz? I've Fif- got to 15- say, <laughs> I, I, I hate testing on animals. Yeah. 
I did. You can't put it. lipstick on a pig. I just thought that's not cruel. Like they're a pig, they're never going to look sexy. I just think you know, and people will look at that and go, "Well, you know, people eat meat and all this." What? But there's a survival, there's a sustenance, there's a whatever. Like I just don't understand why you know, like a cosmetic company would just like pour bleach into a fucking oh, rabbit's eyes and shit. It's fucked, man. It's fucked. I don't people, get that. People wear, wear it. So he, it's 1,500, oh, so 1,500 animals. This is what this, this is saying. Including sheep, mon- monkeys and pigs were tested with these things and they, they went mental. In July of 2023, the head of the US Department of Agriculture, which investigates animal welfare concerns, said it had not found any violations of animal research r- rules at the firm. What do you mean? You're sticking... You're sticking microchips in the pig's head. What do you mean? How bad does it have to get? They didn't complain. Like, it's just ridiculous. So, Mr. Musk's company was given permission to test the chip on humans by the FDA. (laughs) Test the chip on humans. That's in the wording. Do we think Musk owns these companies? No, of course he doesn't. I mean... He he doesn't own... Even just... Just, no. just on the level that the fucker's just tweeting all the time. He's tweeting or he's at Auschwitz. When's he running these fucking <laughs> yeah, companies? Of course he's not. He, I mean, What's a load of bollocks? Anyone who's done any bit of research knows that it was Qatar and the Saudi royals that gave him the money to buy Twitter or told him to buy Twitter and X. And then he's... So what is he doing in Qatar with Ben Shapiro? I'm sorry, Ben Shapiro. They're all win. Who's the other one? Jared Kushner. Who's a, a bad Lubavitch guy? Got that in there eventually, yeah, and I had, to, had to get it in there. Yeah, had to get. That's my thing. Um, but why are they in Qatar, the Saudi royals, but also they're pro-Israel? If they're all supposed to be against each other, because it's all bollocks. Yeah, yeah. As 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 my son says, ball bags, mate, ball bags, mate, ball yeah. bags. Yeah. So there you go. They've been testing on animals, but that that is really revealing. And Mr. Musk's company was given permission to test the chip on humans test the chip on humans so do human testing yeah but, but that's fine because they've just done it to seven billion people or or, or the be- most part of uh the best part of seven billion people that were stupid enough to go along with it so the excess deaths are obviously i mean they've been going on for three years now um gradually basically since the jab rollout they've just been going up and up and up and up and up and up but it's got to a point where even the most ardent fucking head in sand ass in the air is actually having to acknowledge it a bit. So it was brought up again in Parliament and Sunak, you see this, um, stands there at the fucking parapet um, saying how the jabs, bear in mind that he has financial um, incentives with uh, Moderna, yeah. um, that they're safe, that the jab, the COVID jabs are safe. Imagine standing there and saying that now, given everything that's happened. It's just extraordinary. Um, you've got... Well, this is the same guy, Gaz, to, just to add to that. It's the same guy that only two weeks ago wouldn't call shooting a man holding a white flag a war crime. Exa- well, that's that's the thing. So, so what you've got is you've got Great Britain, one of the oldest democracies in the world, right, who, who has a... Um, a, a, a multi-millionaire, unelected prime minister who is clearly an Israel and Ukraine firster, who has absolutely no fucking regard for England and its people and has financial ties to the vaccine manufacturers that were pushed out across the country that have killed countless people and maimed countless people. And he can stand there and say, no, safe, mate. That's your democ- That's your oldest democracy in the t- world, mm. right there. Yeah, it's the same guy that's got his father-in-law is also the founder of Infosys, that's basically creating the police state around you that your chip in your brain will make you a uh, well, make you a, a, a thing of. It's all connected, literally connected now. Um, literally. But, yeah. This was the guy behind furlough. This was the guy behind furlough, which was the longest drawn-out redundancy campaign in fucking history. Yep, and then if that ain't going to work, let's try and make it too expensive for you to get to work. Unbelievable. Stay in your house. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, that's where we are, though. That's where we are. I think I'm, I've run out, and we've come to the top of the hour, guys. The last one I had there was um, Israeli, um, Israeli Defence Minister Gallant. The state of Israel does not need any moral lessons. And I just put, it would need morals to begin with, wouldn't it? Doesn't need any moral lessons. No, of course not. 
Like, that they don't want them. Of course they don't, because they don't want them. They don't want moral lessons, because if you had moral lessons, you'd have to stop killing children. They don't want to do that. No, they do need to be stopped, and they should have been stopped a very long time. And how do you think this is going to stop, Gaz? Because I think I don't know, like you. Is it going to have to be forcefully stopped eventually? Well, that's what they want. That's 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 the idea, isn't it? That they they are they are basically they basically want to have a fight with the guy across the road. The guy across the road isn't biting, so they know the guy across the road um, has kids, and so he would be triggered by kids, you know, being beaten. So mm. basically, he's come out of his house and he's kicking the shit out of a kid in the street repeatedly, and every now and then looking up at the house, just waiting, just waiting. He's going to bite in a minute. He's going to bite in a minute, and as soon as he comes out of the house, see. They're attacking us. They're declaring war on us. Fuck is, is, is that Bill? Is that Bill Hicks thing where he's talking about from the movie Shane, where he talks about the guy that that kicks the gun down to that guy and says, "Pick up the gun." And he goes, "I don't want to pick up the gun." He's like, "Pick up the gun." So I don't want to pick up the gun. Pick up the gun. Eventually, he picks up the gun, so he just shoots him dead. And he turns around and says, "See, you saw everyone. He had a gun." And that's what it's all about. They're just poking and poking. They want Iran. That's the long and short of it. They want Iran. And so they're being allowed to massacre as many people as possible because the more people they massacre, the more people in Iran, Syria, Iraq, the more um, Muslims around the world and anyone with a fucking heart, to be fair, around the world will kick off. And as soon as they kick off and demand that their state does something about it, because the yeah. Russians are the same. The Russians are demanding of Putin to do something about it. That's what they want. Yeah, they do. They don't want. They, they want to scapegoat the people into the decision that they want to make ultimately anyway. And this is exactly what you're saying. So if you look at the on a micro scale, um, have a look at the what we said just a minute ago about Musk being involved with Qatar and the Saudi royals, whilst also visiting Auschwitz. There's no divide about these. They just want the people to make to appear to have made the decision, so they can't be blamed for this. And and you've, you've yeah. hit the nail on the head there. I've got two more, so I'll do them real quick. Malay, hilarious. Argentina fraud. Anyone with a fucking brain knew that it was another false idol. It is encouraging that people want to vote for and go for what he's selling. The only problem is, is he's full of shit. Just like Maloney in Italy and just like Le Pen in France. Um, but the fact that people want change and they, they actually want to get away from the fucking woke um, net zero COVID bullshit, WHO bullshit is great but what they're doing is they're putting their faith in in false idols unfortunately so Malay was a fraud from the beginning he got in hugely on the climate change ticket or the anti-climate change ticket mm. because the rgs don't want it and his main promise was that he would back out of the paris agreement on day one he's not backed out he has been to Brooklyn though and become a Jew. So oh yeah, he's become yeah he's, he's converted, which is hilarious because the fact he's converted just shows again it's not a fucking race, mate. <laughs> Stop saying it's a race. Yeah, it's not, it's a, not race. a race, and it's time. Not to... a race. Yep, it is. You're right, and then we've been right about all this stuff for a long time, and people know it now. People know it. It's just whether we're going to do anything about it in time. That's my well, issue. Well, the the issue that I have more than anything, which is the final one here. Um, which is why I've left it till the end, because I need to send people away with this in their mind so that they, they, they forget everything else we've spoke about and focus solely on this. Um, this was from Sky well, News. The dildo stuff, that's important. The, they had an expert, right? Sky News have had an expert on. <laughs> and they're saying that what we need to prepare for, because obviously there's excess deaths going on, so we need to be, they've really badged it, you fool. So we need to sell it. What else is it? What's killing them? What else is killing them? Because long COVID ain't cutting it. No one's buying that. So it heat waves. So the sun, the summer, is going to kill upwards of 10,000 British people a year from now on. Fat people. They're going to sweat to death. 10,000 British people per year will now die because of climate change and heat waves. And the th funny thing is, as well, is, is is that, you know, what is it Kay Burley or wherever the hell it is? I think it's Kay Burley. He's just sort of sat there going, oh, you know, are you, are you not going to poke him on it? 
are you not going to go where he's got his where where that's come from? Because it will trust me, it'll be plucked out of the fucking ether. So it's like, Literally. but they never they never do, do they? But if you just stood there and gone, yeah, so basically, I have found a machine that um, cures AIDS. And all you have to do is you have to go, go away, AIDS. And it picks up the sound waves and it cures you, yep. right? Kay Burley would be going, well, how, how on earth does that work? Can you please explain to me how you work that out, how you can prove that that's, you know, effective? And you'd have to go down. But he can stand there and say something just as ridiculous. Yeah. Well, you just and go, go. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is bad, isn't it? 10,000 people. And the thing is, I'm sad now because 10,000 people are dead, even though they're not. Because you've said they are, mm. I'm sad about it now. My earpiece is telling me that this is the face that I should make. Yeah. That look one. solemn. I'm really sad. Look solemn. Look solemn. Look solemn. Okay, look solemn. You've just, you've just breathed in, which makes me think you're going to ask a question. Don't ask a question. <laughs> just Don't, put your head down. Look just say, solemn. Just say, trust the science. Remember, trust the science. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. AIDS you know, away. Remember, AIDS away. But when they do that the other way around, it's hilarious. It's generally with a Palestinian or a pro-Palestinian who starts just laying down facts and you just know the guy's there going, ad break, ad break, yep. ad break. And yep. the, oh, that's all we've got time for. Spin on your chair, spin on your chair, six make the squeaky news. wheels, do the six squeaky wheels. Six o'clock news, it's five past six. <laughs> do you mean? You were already at the weather. <laughs> the sun, yeah, weather. Let's get to the weather, climate change. Yeah. Get to the weather quick, quick. Okay, spin on your, spin on, if you get to it, slip a nipple out. Slip a nipple out. We've Gosh. got that left in the bag. Guys, remember to do your own... No, wrong show. What's the next bit? Don't do your own research. Just watch Sky News. <laughs> Where can they get their CBD from? They can go to supremecbd.uk, use the code WTAF, and only 9,999 heatwave deaths will happen because you used the code WTAF and got 40% of everything. Yes, and this is none of these products have been tested on humans. It saves one life. Yeah. Yes. Wear, wear a mask. See you later. See you later. Bye. <laughs> kind of fell off the end there, didn't it? That's the yeah, but that's funny. I like that, though. I like that it fell off the end. <laughs>